Indira Gandhi National Open University presents a program for certificate in communication skills for BPO, ITES and related sectors. Course title English Proficiency Course code BCSSI 002 Block 1. We bring you now a discussion on listening skills part 1 for BPO, ITES and related sectors. The participants are Lalima Aneja Dang, Akanksha Kochar, Amit Sethi, Sushant Malhotra and Sirisankar C. Nair. One of the most important components of communication is listening skills. Listening effectively is the most powerful gift that you can offer to a speaker. In schools, you must have received teaching inputs in reading, writing and speaking skills. However, listening as a skill remains underdeveloped. Today, we will learn about the various elements of listening skills in face-to-face -face and telephonic situations. This is a part of your workbook activity on listening skills. Please refer to Lesson 1, Activity 1, Matching Conversations with Pictures. Here is a simple introductory listening activity for you. You will hear six different conversations in six different situations. The situations have been illustrated in pictures. Match each conversation with the correct picture. Listen to the example first. Conversation 1 Excuse me, we are looking for the central bus station. Can you tell us where it is exactly? Oh yes, it's quite close by. Go straight and turn left at the traffic lights. Uh -huh. The central bus station is at the end of the road. Oh, thank you very much. Ah, you're welcome. The conversation matches with picture 3, where you can see two tourists asking for directions. So, conversation 1 in your workbook has been written for picture 3. Now, let's begin. Match the five conversations to the correct picture. Conversation 2. Hello, Martin. Aren't you late for school? The bell is already gone. Good morning, sir. I'm sorry. There was a huge traffic jam on the way. You'd better hurry up. I must tell you that. Conversation 3. Hello. How can I help you? Well, I'm looking for a laptop computer. Do you have the latest models? Oh, yes, indeed. This way, please. All the latest laptops are in this section. Conversation 4. Good morning, Mr. White. What can I do for you today? Well, Doctor, I can't sleep at night. I keep waking up every half hour and it is very difficult to go back to sleep. Can you prescribe something for me, please? Oh, sure, Mr. White. Yeah. Take this tablet before going to bed. This should take care of your problem. Conversation 5 Have you seen my latest computer game? Wow. How does it work? It's called Kurukshetra. You can actually take part in the war between the Pandavas and the Kauravs. Does it feature Lord Krishna too? Of course! <laughs> Conversation 6 Tickets, please. Two tickets to the airport, please. How long does it take to reach there? Well, about 40 to 50 minutes, depending on the traffic. That is the end of Lesson 1, Activity 1. Let us go to Lesson 1, Activity 2. Fill up the table. In the activity, you will hear six conversations. As you listen to the conversations, you must say A. Who the speakers are B. Where they are talking C. What they are talking about Fill up the table with the information as shown in the example. Listen to the example first. Conversation 1 Excuse me, can you show me where the men's department is? I want to buy a shirt for my husband. Oh, sure. It's on the first floor. You can take the lift or the escalator. Thank you. You're most welcome, ma'am. The speakers here are a customer and a sales assistant. They are in a big store and the customer is asking for the men's department. This information has been filled in the table in your workbook as an example. Now, listen to the rest of the conversations and fill up the table. Conversation 2. Can you show us to our tables, please? This way, ma'am. We have reserved this table near the window for you. Thank you. Now, uh, can I see the menu card, please? Sure, ma'am. Conversation 3. Can I see your license, please, sir? Yes, officer. Did you know you were exceeding the speed limit just now on this road? Oh, was I? I didn't realize that. There is an on-the-spot fine of a piece 300 for this offense, sir. Conversation 4. Oh, Pramod! Come in! Have you come to submit the assignment? 
I'm afraid, ma'am, I was not able to finish the geography essay. Can you please give me an extension of one week, please? Hey, are you sure you can submit it by next week? Yes, ma'am, surely. Hmm. In that case, you can have an extension of one week, but not more than that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Conversation five. Would you like to have a drink with your meal? Drinks of your choice are served free on this flight. Yes, please. Can I have some orange juice, please? Oh, I'm sorry. We have run out of orange juice. Could I get you some apple juice instead? Okay, that would be fine. That is the end of lesson one, activity two. Now let us move to lesson one, activity three of your workbook. Descriptions. Here is a listening and matching activity for you. This time you will hear six descriptions of six different people in the pictures given below. Match the description with the correct person. The first one has been done as an example. Description one. In this picture, you will find a girl in her twenties with long hair, wearing slacks and a top. She is also fond of jewelry. This is a description of the person in picture number six. So, description one has been written for picture number six. Now we shall begin. Description two. This is a man who is very traditionally dressed in a suit and a bow tie. He wears glasses and seems to be expecting some rain. Description three. Here we are talking about an elderly woman who appears to be a teacher. She is very conservatively dressed and is wearing strong shoes. Description four. This is Rohit. He is a bus driver but loves to play football. Right now, he is in the football ground wearing shorts and a sleeveless t-shirt. He seems to love his beard very much. Description 5. This boy is James with short hair. He is an Afro-American and is wearing jeans and a t-shirt. And yes, he is a student. Description 6. In Description 6, we are talking about a lady with curly hair. She is a young mother and is seen taking her child for a walk. Descriptions for two pictures, picture 5 and picture 8, are missing. Can you write similar descriptions for these two people? Show your descriptions to your tutor. This is the end of lesson 1, activity 3 of your workbook. Now let us go to lesson 1, activity 4 of your workbook. Facing an interview. You will hear a man facing an interview for the post of a geography teacher in a school. He is being interviewed by the principal, Dr. Jane Prescott. Write about three words or a phrase for your answers. Good morning, ma'am. Can I come in? Oh, yes. Come in. Have you come for an interview for the post of geography teacher in our school? Yes, ma'am. First of all, can you tell me your full name? Raj Purohit. That's R-A-J-P-U-R-O-H-I-T. Thank you. How old are you? I'm just 26. Ah. Have you taught anywhere before? Yes, ma'am. In a secondary school in Nagaland. Nagaland? How did you get your job there? The Swami Vivekanand Trust selected me for a job for the new school near Kohima to teach geography. Did you teach anything else? Yes. I taught English at class 8 level and geography in classes 8, 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. I was also the warden of the hostel. It was a very challenging job. Indeed. What kind of a school was it? It was a residential school set up especially for the tribal children of Nagaland living in that area. I see. How long did you teach there? For about three to four years, ma'am. At first, it was very boring, mainly because I didn't know the language of the locals. And secondly, because I missed my family. I wanted to get back to Jammu, my hometown, as soon as I finished one year. But then, what made you stay on? Well... Soon, activity in the school picked up. We enrolled more and more students and my classes became more interesting. Hmm. And you also learned to interact in the local language, I suppose, Raj? Yes, <laughs> that's right. Why did you choose geography as a subject, Raj? Well, geography is a very fascinating subject. Mm -hmm. It takes you around the world with the help of books, pictures and maps. And I love looking at the atlas. Geography has many practical uses too. Tell me, what do you enjoy most about teaching? Firstly, you learn more and more about the subject as you teach. And secondly, I love being with young children. They are so friendly and eager to learn, you see. Alright. What challenges did you face when you taught in Nagaland? The first problem I faced 
was that some of the children were first generation learners. Nobody in their families had gone to school before,、mm-hmm. so keeping the children in the school and making them study and learn was a great responsibility on my part. And then? And then, well, the weather. It was really hostile. The summers were hot and humid, and the winters were very cold and dry. And it rained very heavily for three to four months in a year. It took me quite some time to get used to the weather there. Well, Raj, I don't think you will face either of these problems in this place. The school is very well established, and the weather here is very pleasant. So tell me, when would you like to start working in our school? Well, ma'am, I was thinking of joining on the first of December. Will that be okay?、Mm, I suppose so. Wish you all the best in your new job. See you in December, then, Raj. Thank you, ma'am. That is the end of lesson one, part B. Now let's move to lesson two. At the shop. You will hear a conversation between a customer and a sales assistant at a stationery shop. Listen to the conversation and fill up the form provided. Can I order some office stationery for my company from your store? Oh sure. How can I help you? First of all, my name is Avinash Reddy, and I work for Intel Telecom. I N T E L T E L E C O M. Intel Telecom, right? And do you have an account with us? Yes. And the number is I N T six nine two four double one S E. Okay, got that. I N T six nine two four one one S B. No, S E E for England. Oh, sorry. I N T six nine two four one one S E. Okay. Now, what would you like to order, Mister Reddy? Well, the first thing is large size envelopes. Which color? White, green, or yellow? White, please. And I want five boxes of those. Only five boxes. If you order ten boxes, you get a bigger discount. Okay, make it ten boxes then. Anything else? Yes, we would like to have some printer papers. Which color? White, light blue, or pale green? Light blue, please, and make it twenty packets. Okay, twenty packets photocopy paper, light blue, and what else can I pack for you? Can you give me some floppy disks? We have run out of them in office. About twenty-five of them. Right, twenty-five floppy disks, and do you have next year's diaries in stock? Oh yes, we unpacked them only yesterday. How many would you like? Do they come in different sizes? Medium and standard. Ten medium and ten standard. No, twenty standard. So will that be thirty diaries in all? Yes, thirty. And could you include a price list or a catalog? It will make things easier for me to remember next time. We'll just put in next year's catalog as well. I will send them all to you by Friday. Is that all right? Friday is fine, but make sure they all come together. And please, before twelve noon, I have meeting at two, and I want this sorted out before that. We will do that, Mister Reddy. The whole order will be delivered on Friday before noon. And how will you be paying? That is the end of lesson two. Now let us move on to lesson three, activity one of your workbook. Let me guide you. This is a conversation between a tourist and a guide. In this activity, you will hear a tourist asking a guide about cruises in the Cochin Harbour. Listen to their conversation and complete the table using three words or a short phrase. Cochin Harbour cruises. How can I help you, ma'am? Good morning. I would like to get some information about the boat cruises that you run each day in the harbour area. Well, ma'am, we run three cruises every day: the highlight cruise, the noon cruise, and the sunset cruise. Which one would you be interested in, ma'am? Could you tell me more about them? What time they leave? How long each cruise takes? The prices? You know that sort of thing. The highlight cruise is in the morning and that leaves at 9:30 a.m. And、uh, how long does it take? It takes about three hours, and you are back at the jetty before one in time for your lunch. It takes you all the important places in the harbor. This cruise costs rupees three hundred per person. I see. Do you get coffee and snacks on the cruise? No, I'm afraid not. But we will be taking you to a museum shop in the middle of the harbor. There, you can buy coffee and snacks at the coffee day outlet. We also give a box of sweets to all our customers. Oh, that's wonderful! Now, what about the noon cruise? When does that leave? The noon cruise leaves at 1 p.m., ma'am, and it is a four-hour cruise. 
It cost rupees 500 per person, but the good news is that lunch is served free of cost on the cruise as you enjoy the trip. Oh, that sounds very exciting. Do you serve vegetarian food on the cruise? Oh, yes, ma'am, indeed. There are separate sections for vegetarian and non-vegetarian food. Uh -huh. Now, let me tell you about the Sunset Cruise. Yes, the Sunset Cruise. Well, that sounds very romantic. When does that leave? It leaves around 6 p.m., ma'am, and takes you on to the high seas where you can enjoy the sunset over a cup of coffee and some delicious snacks. And then the cruise goes round the harbour showing you the sights as the night descends. And how much does that cost? The sunset cruise is good value for money. It is only rupees 400 per person, but then everyone is served coffee and snacks, you see. Oh, yes. I shouldn't forget that. Mm, well... Where do the cruises start from? Well, all our cruises start from Jetty Number 2, which is situated right opposite the central market. Oh, that's very convenient. Is there someone to guide us on these cruises? Yes, all our cruises have a guide on board who will give you a running commentary in both English and in Hindi. Is there no commentary in the local language? No, I'm afraid, but the guide knows the local language and you can ask him some questions. All right. Can I book for the Sunset Cruise tomorrow for two people? There is no need to book. Just come early and you get a good seat. Please remember one thing. Don't forget to wear a light coat because it can become a little chilly out there at night, especially if there is some breeze from the sea. Oh yes, I'll remember that. Thank you so much for your help. You're most welcome, ma'am. Hope to see you tomorrow evening. That is the end of Lesson 3, Activity 1. Now let us go to Lesson 3, Activity 2 of your workbook. Guided tour of a library. In this activity, we are in a library. You are visiting the library for the first time and you are going on a tour of the library. Listen to the guided tour commentary and label the library map with the right places. Choose the places from the box below. Write the correct letters A to J on the diagram. Welcome to the University Library. We are happy to take you around the library. Just follow the directions in this recording and we will show you all the important places in the library. Let's start at the entrance. As soon as you insert your student ID card, the doors open automatically. On your immediate left, you will find the computer center, which will provide all the library databases and internet access. Next to the computer center, on the left, you will find the reading room with several individual kiosks to give you undisturbed reading facility. As you proceed further, you will come to the returns area. In the returns area, you can return borrowed books or renew them if you want them again. This area is an enclosed area, a cabin, and students will have to go in one by one with their books. The library staff will be there to help you. In the cabin next to the returns area, you will find a room exclusively for journals. This room houses all the latest journals which you can take out and read within the library or borrow for a period of one week. We are proud to say that our collection of journals is one of the best in this country. Next, as you go past the staff room, which is out of bounds for you anyway, we come to a large section in the corner, which is our reference section. This is a section with comfortable seating and browsing facilities. We can read here undisturbed any book which you would like to read but cannot take out of the library. At this corner, as you turn right, we come to the staircase, which will take you to the upper levels of the library. Next to the staircase are the toilets for men, women and also with wheelchair access. On the other side of the staircase, we also have a coffee vending machine. Well, to keep you stimulated for effective reading. Right opposite the stairs in a central area is another large section with many rows of chairs and tables, which is the newspapers and magazine section. Sit back, relax, read through a wide selection of national and international newspapers and magazines. Now the good news is that you can sip your coffee or tea 
in this area while reading your papers? Well, in the corner there, we have an audio-visual resource center which houses a vast collection of audio and video CDs, CD-ROMs, microfilms and other material which you can use on any one of the 20 computer terminals. Right next to the resource center is the seminar room where seminars, meetings and conferences can be held. The seminar room can be partitioned into three exclusive sections to have small group meetings of about 20 people each or have a large gathering of up to a hundred delegates. And conveniently located next to the seminar room is this small room where you will find our photocopy machines and laser printers. We have three heavy duty and five smaller Xerox machines here and 10 printers which operate automatically by inserting cards. These cards can be bought from the circulation desk which is the round desk which you find diagonally opposite the photocopy room. The circulation desk also is the place where our library staff members are available for consultation and where new books which have been borrowed are stamped. In the corner there you find our student lockers where students can keep their bags and other belongings under lock and key. As we go further, we are in the exit area where you will find a desk where the librarian's office is located. Our librarian, Mrs. Dorothy James, is a very interesting person who can be approached at any time for any queries. Well, friends, we are now at the exit where you will have to pass through a circular door which will scan your stamped books. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the library. Now, let me tell you about the opening and closing times. That is the end of Lesson 3, Activity 2. Let us move on to a very interesting activity now. Lesson 3, Activity 3, Labeling a Drink Can. Here is a labeling activity for you. In this activity, you will see a drink can which is made of aluminium. Listen to two students labeling the different parts of the can for a class assignment. As you listen, label the can. Blanks 1 to 6. Hello Rita, how are you doing today? Are you ready with the assignment about the aluminium can? Hi Mahesh, don't tell me you have already finished the assignment. Let's have a look. Well, let's go into the library. We can spread out the sheets. Here you are. Wow! It looks quite impressive. Where do we start? Here, at the bottom, which is also known as the base. This part is shaped like a dome. So, this lower part is the base. That's right. Now let's move upwards to the middle part of the can. This part I have called the body. Okay, let's call it body. Shall we look at the polished surface on the body? I think this is the right place to print the brand name. Do you think so? Okay, the brand name will come here. It's right in the middle. Now let's go to the upper part. What shall we label this as? Well, since this is the part where the lid is, let's just call it the lid. Uh-uh, the lid. Okay, but do you see that the lid is made up of two important parts? the side and the top. In that case, let's label them separately. This part in the side actually is the edge of the can. What is the edge called? Uh, the rim. Shall we call it the rim? Yes, the rim. And now let's look at the top, which has a small handle called the tab. The tab it is. So the lid part has two components, the rim or the edge and the tab at the top which actually opens the can when pulled. So there you are. That was easy. We have labeled the drink can successfully. Well, I say two heads are better than one. That is the end of lesson three. Activity three. Now let us move on to lesson four. Listening and responding to the colleagues. In this lesson, you are going to listen to a conversation between two teachers discussing in the staff room. They are making plans to arrange a farewell party for their colleague who is retiring. Listen to their conversation and complete the notes. Hello Dr. Sharma, 
I'm glad I met you here. Are you free? Hello, Mrs. Asha. Yes, I am free. What did you want to discuss with me? Any maths problem? Oh, Dr. Sharma, you're always thinking about maths. Have you forgotten? We have to arrange a farewell party for Professor Jain, who is retiring next month. That's right. I now remember. So when do you think we should have a party? It's better to have it before the end of the month. Otherwise, the holidays will be starting and we won't get a chance after that. Shall we say the 30th of November? Hmm, I think it's a good idea. It's a Saturday and that would be ideal for a party. Where shall we have the party? At the novelty restaurant as usual? Well, Dr. Sharma, I was thinking about our college mess hall. On Saturdays, it's usually vacant and we can save some money by holding the party there. Yes, Mrs. Asha. The college mess hall is a good place to have a party. Okay, now whom should we invite and whom should we not forget? We must invite Professor Jain and his wife, of course. And then, of course, the principal, the teachers and all the office staff. The teachers and the office staff? What about the students? Mm, that won't be necessary because the students are arranging their own party. Okay then, that's settled then. When do you think we should send the invitations? Better send them just before the party. Otherwise, people might forget all about it. Mm, what about the 25th of November? That would be fine. 25th of November should be alright. Now let's think about a present. Would you mind buying it? Not at all. I love doing that kind of a job. Do you have any ideas? You know, somebody suggested a coffee maker or a CD player. Well, yes. And what about a set of dictionaries? I heard Professor Jan say that he needed a new dictionary. Maybe we can think of that too. Dictionaries? Hmm. Yes. That would be useful to him. After all, he's a professor of English. <laughs> <laughs> When should we collect the money then? Mm, it would be a good idea to collect the money during the lunch break. The lunch break is the best time to collect the money. And how much should we ask each other to contribute? About Rs. 100? Mm, Rs. 100 seems reasonable. Nobody should grumble on that. Now what should we do for entertainment? Shall we arrange some party games? Hey, let's ask Miss Leela, our dance teacher, to arrange something. That's done. And finally the speech. Who do you think should do the speech? I think we should leave that to the principal. He loves doing that, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the principal will give the speech. Then that's it. Have we of everything? Yes, we have. I think we will start collecting the money and buying the gifts. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. My pleasure, miss. That is the end of lesson four. One must remember that listening is not only about preparing a response, but engaging completely with the speaker's point of view. We have been gifted with two ears and one mouth and therefore we must listen more and speak less and that is a secret to effective communication. In the words of Mark Twain, the ability to listen is directly proportionate to the intellect of an individual. That was a program on listening skills part 1 for BPO, ITES and related sectors. The participants were Lalima Aneja Dang, Akanksha Kochar, Amit Sethi, Sushant Malhotra, and Sivasankar C. Nair. Sound recording R.S. Bisht, editing Sadan Lal, content coordinator Dr. M.C. Nair, and production assistant Kamal Kumar. This program was produced by M. Rajamannar and it came to you from Indira Gandhi National Open University.